what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Friends, the war increased the demand for anthracite coal to an all-time peak overnight. Huge new emergency demand sprang up suddenly on all sides. For example, when coke was diverted from heating homes to making steel, steel vital for all our weapons, from battleships to blockbusters, homes cut off from coke had to have anthracite. A city twice the size of Buffalo might have frozen if anthracite hadn't been quickly supplied. Yes, 300,000 homes needed anthracite and got it. And this tremendous emergency heating job is just one of five big extra wartime heating jobs anthracite has taken over since Pearl Harbor. These increased demands explain the restriction limiting you to 87.5% of last year's coal, friends. And of this, you can be sure. By getting along with less anthracite, you're helping bring victory sooner. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death. To the shadow. Well, Professor Petro, your new television apparatus doesn't seem to be living up to your posts. In fact, it doesn't seem to be working at all. But one moment, Mr. Crane, a little difficulty. There, it is fixed. Now, what shall my television machine show to you? You really mean that with this radio device you can tune in on some place in the city and show it to me on that little screen? Any place. Inside buildings, inside locked rooms, down in the subway, wherever there is even a tiny bit of light, my new television rays will go. Uh, name the place, Mr. Crane. All right. You know the Gordon Trust Company building? But yes, a few blocks from here. Dan Gordon is an old pal of mine. Let's uh, peek into his office. Very well. I turn the dial... So, now this style. So. And on the screen. By George, it is the Gordon building. Uh, the office. Which is it? The fifth floor, those big windows. So. Just this style. Why, it's. It's as if we were sailing right up to the window. And now we see inside the office. I'll say we do. There's Dan Gordon at his desk, talking to his confidential secretary. Now you shall hear them speak. Listen. Got all the bonds there, Wilson? Uh, yes, Mr. Gordon. And let's get them in the safe fast. They're worth half a million and good as cash. Half a million? Hmm? Uh, shall I put them in the safe? I wish you would. Uh, Sphinx is the combination word. S-P-H-I-N-X. Yes, sir. S-P-H-I-N-X. You and I are the only ones in the world who know it, so don't talk in your sleep. No, not me. There. They're safe now. Good. Well, that's all for now. I'll ring if I need you. Uh, yes, Mr. Gordon. I'll be outside, sir. Okay, Professor. That's enough. Well, Mr. Crane, now will your rich friends be interested in my machine? <laughs> Dan Gordon would be. But I'd uh, like to see the machine work some more, Professor Petro. As you wish. Now, this time, show me how you tune in on a, on a place that you've never seen before. I'll just pick one from the phone book. All places are the same to my machine. Uh, here's a name... Fenton. Fenton. The address, 1137 River Drive. 1137 River Drive. On my special map, it is about here. I see. I turn this dial to the distance marked. So. And this dial to the direction the map shows. I'm right with you. Then I switch on the screen, and you see. I say, this is wonderful. We're looking at the front of a house, and there's the number. 
1137. Two men are just opening the front door. Uh, let us look inside. Uh, turn this control. And we're looking into the living room. Mr. Crane. Look. What is it? The two men who have entered the room. Yes, I see. But there, there is a third man in the room, and they do not see him. Well, but how can they help but see him? He's right out in plain sight. Say, there's something queer going on. I recognize that third fellow. Let's listen in. Very well. We will hear. Well, the old place sure looks good, Lefty. After three years in stirfinger, any place would look good to you. <laughs> Not a thing changed. Yeah, you took good care of the place. Yeah, just like you it is. Well, I'll be seeing you, boys. Okay, Lefty. I got some nice jobs lined up for you guys. So long, Finger. Uh, it's good to be a free man again. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Lefty, was that you? It was the shadow. Welcome home, Finger. The shadow. Where are you? I can't see anyone. Your brother could not see me either, Finger, for no man can see the shadow. My brother? Yes, Finger. The murderer the world knew as Killer Fenton. You shadow. It was you who sent him to the chair while I was up the river. I helped the law bring him to the bar of justice. I'm here, Finger, to warn you not to follow in his footsteps. You've got nothing on me. No, your debt to society is paid for the moment. You've been planning to resume your criminal career as leader of your brother's gang. How do you know that? The shadow knows many things. So follow the path of law, Finger, or suffer the consequences. You can't scare me, Shadow. I'm going to get you, do you hear? I'm going to get you and revenge my brother. Shadow, where are you? He's gone. All right, Professor. Shut the machine off. But I do not understand. This shadow, the other could not see him. Yet on the screen he was... that's it. Fenton must have been hypnotized. That's why he couldn't see the shadow. But you can't hypnotize a machine. What do you say, Mr. Crane? Uh, forget it, Professor. Let's talk about this invention of yours. Ah, then you are satisfied. Your rich friends, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Jennings, Mr. Dexter, they will back me, I'm afraid you're making a mistake. Gordon, Jennings, and Dexter are no friends of mine. Not your friends, but... In fact, I hate them. They ruined me once. And I'll never rest until I get revenge. What? Mr. Crane, you make the joke, no? Yes, Professor, I make the joke. Very funny joke, but only I will laugh. I I don't understand. Why, you poor fool, you don't see the possibilities of your machine. Why, already your little gadget has not only shown me how to put my hands on a cool half million, but it's... It's actually told me the true identity of the shadow. A secret of fabulous value to the underworld. You mean... You would use my instrument for criminal purposes? How discerning of you, Professor. No. No, I won't allow it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Can't I, Professor? A, a gun. Yes, Professor. No. A gun. Extra, extra paper. Read all about it. Half a million dollar robbery. Watchman killed. Confidential secretary held for murder. Extra. Read all about it. Cranston, I don't care a thing about your hunches. The guy that knocked off the watchman was the old gent secretary, this uh, Wilson guy, and that's all there is to it. But, Commissioner, I know Arthur Wilson didn't do it. I've known that family for years. I went to school with Arthur's sister. Very nice, Miss Lane. That'll be Exhibit A for the defense. All right, Commissioner, but don't say I didn't warn you. Warn me? Yes, Commissioner. Don't look surprised when Wilson is proven innocent. Now, Cranston, if you've got any ideas about snooping in this case, forget it. You're a nice guy, Cranston, for some of these screwy mysteries. But this is an open and shut case. Yes, Commissioner, just as you say. Uh, uh, Cranston, I want you to promise you'll keep your nose out of this. Yes, Commissioner. But Lamont... I promise, Commissioner. But Lamont... Well, Commissioner, we'll have to be getting along. Come on, Margot. But Lamont... Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye. Oh, Lamont. You know Arthur Wilson is as innocent as I am. Of course, Margot. Well, then why did you make that silly promise to Commissioner Weston? Oh, I don't know, Margot. But you didn't hear the shadow promise anything, did you? Aren't you, Tom? Yes. I stepped out to get the late newspapers. But the cops still think young Wilson is guilty. I know. I was just watching a very interesting scene at headquarters. At headquarters? Yes. What would you say if I told you that just five minutes ago, the shadow decided to try to prove Wilson innocent? The shadow? Oh, no, you don't mean it. Don't be alarmed. I have all my plans worked out. The shadow won't bother us. Yeah, I know, but... Plans, Tom, that go far beyond my vengeance on Gordon Jennings and Dexter... 
I'll have that and millions besides. And I'll make you rich, too. But we're going to need help. A gang to do the actual work. I don't follow you. Well, you will. Any moment now, we should be having a caller who... Oh, there he is now. Come in. Ah, Mr. Fenton. Come in. All right, I'm in. Which one of you is Crane? I am, Mr. Fenton. This is Mr. Cogan, my associate. How do you do? Never mind the chatter. Your phone, you knew something interests me, so I'm here. Now talk and talk fast. Very well. Yesterday, you received a warning from the individual known as the Shadow. How do you know that? And you want to revenge your brother's death by killing the Shadow, am I right? I'll get him if it's the last thing I do. I understand how you feel. What do you know about the Shadow? I know his true identity. What? Who is he? Oh, slowly, Mr. Fenton. I have a proposition to make. If it's dough you want. It's not money. I want you and your gang to join forces with us. Join up with you? I don't get it. I'll explain. I've perfected a machine by which I can watch every move made by the police, learn the combinations of safes, ferret out the most hidden secrets. I don't believe it. I'll prove it later on. Now, this is my proposition. You and your men will carry out our orders. We'll tell you whom to rob and how. We'll give you foolproof information. And in return, we get half the loot. You almost make me believe you mean it. I do. Join us and you'll be wealthy in a month. And, uh, as a bonus, shall we say, I'll reveal to you the identity of the shadow. What have I got to lose? Okay, it's a deal. Good. Now, your first action will be the removal of my enemies. Daniel Gordon of the Gordon Trust Company, Albert Jennings of Jennings Manufacturing, and John Dexter of Dexter and Company. Rub them out, you mean? Yes. Like you, I put revenge before money. Okay, it's still a deal. Well, then I think a drink is called for. Tom, pour some drinks. Yeah, yeah, of course, huh? There you are. Yes, and one for you, Mr. Fenton. Thanks. Now, what shall we drink to? I'll tell you what we'll drink to. Death to the shadow. Whatever inconvenience the wartime coal situation has caused, give it credit, folks. It has also created an opportunity. Yes, the need for conserving coal presented homeowners with the opportunity of enjoying automatic heat regulation. Recognizing how effective heat regulators are, the government provided for their manufacture and sale without priority last fall. And many thousands of you folks, alert to the fuel economy, added comfort and convenience of a regulator, have already installed one this season. You've dropped hit-or-miss hand control of furnace dampers for up-to-date automatic control. Yes, your regulator thermostat upstairs has been keeping the temperature in your home right where it belongs at the proper healthful level day and night, and without your running up and downstairs constantly. But best of all, you folks who've installed a regulator have saved coal. You've stopped the inevitable waste of hand control, introduced real fuel economy for this season and next season when fuel conservation will be equally important. So be wise, friends. If you aren't enjoying all these advantages, now is the time to begin. Call your dealer. Order your automatic heat regulator tomorrow. And now, back to the shadow. Yes? Who is it? Detective O'Grady to see Mr. Gordon. All right, just a moment. Uh, Is something about the robbery? Yeah. The uh, commissioner wants to know if you can identify this knife. Knife? Why, no, I, I never saw it before. Well, take a closer look. Yes, what is it? Package for you, Mr. Jennings. Just came special delivery. Package? Oh, let's see it. Yes, sir. Oh, marked confidential. I wasn't expecting any packages. This string seems to be stuck inside the package. What? It's ticking. It must be a clock. Good Lord, it's... Well, here you are, Mr. Dexter. Uh, thanks, John. I'm glad to be home. Been a bad day. 
reading about the deaths of poor Gordon and Jenny. Now, uh, Mr. Dexter, look out. Hey, uh, what's That's the matter? car across the street. A man with a machine gun. He's going to... Ah! Gordon, Jennings, and Dexter. Now we can get down to business. In a month, we'll own this town. Extra, read all about it. Crime wave sweeps city. Prominent men killed. Millions of dollars stolen. Police helpless. Extra, extra, read all about it. Lamont, you mean the police haven't any clues? They haven't any idea who's committing these crimes. I'm afraid that's about the size of it, Margo. And you haven't learned anything either. I'm afraid I failed as utterly as the police. Margo, it's as though some superhuman gang were at work in this city. They not only fail to leave clues, they also seem to have advance information on every move the police are going to make. No wonder they've been so successful. That's not all. There could be spies inside the police department. But the gang even knows in advance what I'm going to do. Oh, Lamont, you're joking. No, I'm not. Yesterday, I made a secret appointment with a petty crook who wanted to sell me some information. Before I ever saw him, he was murdered. Oh, how horrible. So a dozen other similar incidents have happened. I'm checkmated at every turn. Why, it's as if they were able to watch everything you do. What? I said it's as if they were able to watch everything you do. Yes, could... I know. You just reminded me of something. What, Lamont? Seems impossible, and yet... Margo, some time ago, there was a foreign scientist, a Professor Petro, who tried to get me interested in a remarkable television machine he claimed he'd invented. Television? You know, whatever became of him and his invention... Oh, do you think... I think it's something I ought to check on. I have something else to do first. You see, Margot, at 10 o'clock, I have an appointment at apartment 9D, the Riverdale Arms. Someone there who claims to know the leader of the gang. Oh, that's wonderful, Lamont. It's only 8 now. You mind if I turned out the light, took a little nap in this chair? Why, I know. Oh, of uh, course not. Oh, it's fine. There. Margot, listen, we've got to speak in whispers. I thought you were up to something. Lamont. I have an idea I want to test. I am going to the Riverdale Apartments. I keep a room there for business purposes. And your appointment? I made that up. Perhaps someone will meet me there after all. I'm going to slip out the back way. What do you want me to do? Stay here till I get back and leave the lights off. Yes, of course. Good girl. Oh, wake me at 9.30, will you, Margot? Yes, of course, Lamont. This is Crane. Send Lefty to the Riverdale Apartments, number 9D. A man who knows something lives there. Have Lefty eliminate him. Rub him up. Right. Then go to the apartment of Miss Margot Lane. The address is in the phone book. Margot Lane. What's the job there? Bring her here. Bring along a man you'll find asleep in the living room, too. But be sure to knock him out before he can wake up. And bind them both tightly. There must be no slip-up. Don't worry, there won't be. But listen, Crane. What? It's time you spilled the dope in the shadow. I'm beginning to think you're bluffing. I'm just as anxious to be rid of the shadow as you are. He's becoming dangerous. But before the night is over, you'll have the pleasure of personally delivering him to the morgue. <laughs> mm, this is a right joint. There ain't nobody here. The boy says to rub somebody out. There's nobody to rub. The room's empty. <laughs> Whom were you expecting to find, Lefty? Who's that? Stick him up, yo. Hey, there's nobody here. Nobody but the shadow. The shadow. My gun is gone. I have it now, Lefty. Now, who sent you here? Answer. Nobody sent me here. I want the truth, quickly. I'm I'm not saying nothing. I have your gun in my hand, Lefty. Now talk fast. You can't bluff me, Shadow. I know you won't shoot. Won't I, Lefty? Uh, hey, that slug almost hit me. Yes, this time I'll do better. Oh, wait, Shadow, wait. I'll talk. Finger Fenton sent me. You lie. He's not clever enough to plan these crimes. No, no, he didn't. And who did? I don't know. Only Finger knows who the brain guy is. Somebody big with connections. He knows everything. Some kind of machine tells him. As I thought. All right, get into that closet. <laughs> the closet? It'll keep you safe in the police. Quickly now. The shadow has other work to do. Crane, I'm getting tired of this runaround. Now it's time you talked. Who is the shadow? You'll know very soon, Fenton. I'm beginning to wonder. You slipped me two bum stairs tonight. 
I think you're trying to put over a third one. Lefty's capture couldn't be helped. Couldn't, huh? And what about the snatch? You said we'd find a guy and a girl in the apartment. There was just a girl in there. Two mistakes in one evening ain't so good. Maybe that peekable machine of yours is slipping. There'll be no more mistakes. Within an hour, the shadow will be dead. You better not be bluffing. Why, you fool, don't you realize it's just as important to me to see the shadow dead as it is to you? Now go send in Tom Cogan and that girl, Margot Lane. I have a phone call to make. A very important phone call. Margot. Margot, where are you? Margot. She's not here. The apartment's empty. The rug crumpled. A lamp knocked over. There's been signs of a struggle. Telephone. Hello? I see you've discovered Miss Lane is missing. Who is this calling? That hardly matters, does it? I just want to tell you that if you hope to see Margot Lane alive, you'll obey very carefully the orders I'm about to give you. Trying to make me believe you kidnapped her? Do you doubt it? No, I believe you. All right, what do you want me to do? As soon as you hang up the telephone, walk straight out of the building and get into your car, which is parked at the curb. Go on. Drive by the most direct route to where Highway 19 crosses the city limits. Then park beneath the street light there and, and wait. Park and wait. Then what? Presently, four men will pull up beside you in another car. Get into that car and let yourself be bound. They'll drive you to where I'm waiting. Is that clear? Perfectly. If you stop for a moment on the way, speak to anyone, or try to phone the police, Margot Lane will die rather horribly. I understand. It's a bright moonlight night. I can watch every move you make. One single false move, and the girl dies. I know your powers. All right, I'm starting now. coming. He's almost reached the point where our boys are to pick him up. I wish I knew if you were lying. Well, this time I'll let you look for yourself. You see this small screen here in front of me? What does it show? It's a car. A guy driving it. He's wearing a soft, dark hat. Now he's pulling up under the streetlight at the city limits and parking. Mm, Now, are you satisfied? Yeah. Yeah, except that I can't see his face. It's our man. I've watched him from the instant he put down the telephone. He's obeyed orders exactly. You'll never capture him. He's too clever for you. Oh, Miss Lane, I'd almost forgotten that you were with us. Your loyalty does you credit, but we're complete masters of the situation. Well, you'll find out that you're wrong. Well, suppose he tries some tricks after we get him here. Tricks? What can he do? He'll be bound, you and I are armed, and Finger here even has the submachine gun he's so fond of. No, once our man steps into this room, his doom is sealed. <laughs> what? what was that? Shadow, it's you. It is a shadow. I've heard that laugh before. He's in this room. He can't be. He's still waiting in his car for our men. I can see him plainly. Perhaps the shadow can be in two places at once. Visible in one and unseen in the other. That's him, I tell you. We can't see him, but he's here. He's tricked us. Fenton, bolt the door and guard it. He's doomed anyway. Yeah. I got the door locked. Now tell me where he is and I'll blow him in half. But we can't see him. No man can see the shadow unless the shadow wishes to be seen. You're wrong, shadow. I can see you. Where is he? Just tell me. No, don't shoot yet. I want to find out how much the police may know about us. But cover the space just one foot to the left of the mantle. That's where he's standing. You're very clever, Crane. I suppose you've now focused this television machine so that it shows you this room. Exactly. And on the screen, you're perfectly visible. Make a move, Shadow, and you die. I told you I'd get you, Shadow, for sending my brother to the chair. In a minute, you'll be saying hello to him. Shadow, be careful. <laughs> you're all so sure of yourselves. Why don't you go ahead and shoot? I'm gonna. We're wasting too much time. Crane, I'm gonna let him have it. Of course, it. the police at the window might try to stop you. Oh, police? Where? Quick, shoot. It's just a trick. Keep... Why, you... Uh, uh, take that. You're dead now. You gotta be. Quick, feel around on the floor for his body. He must be dead, but I can't see him. The screen doesn't show him anymore. Because I'm directly behind you now, and it's time for me to disable that machine, I think. No, stop him! I'll get him. He's not gonna go away this time. I'll get him. I'm gonna kill him. You shot me. I'll take that machine gun, Fenton. What? Uh, you've killed Crane, your partner in crime, not the shadow. You wanted to follow in the footsteps of your brother. And as soon as the law has judged you, you're going to. Straight to the chair. Lamont, if you don't tell me how the shadow solved the case and escaped the trap those men set for him, I... I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> Well, it was really you who solved the case, Margot. I did. Of course. 
If you hadn't said that it was as if someone was watching every move I made, I'd never have remembered Professor Petro and the television machine he once made such great claims for. Oh, I, and then when you slipped out of my apartment in the dark... And I was trying a little experiment which proved to me I was being watched. Then I knew some form of television had made all the recent crimes possible. But after Crane phoned you at my apartment, he was watching you on the television screen every second. How was it possible to trick him then? Well, he wasn't watching me, he was watching a decoy. When you're being spied on, it's good strategy to have a double. A double? Mm-hmm. Before I return to your apartment, I arrange with Commissioner Weston to have a detective who strongly resembles me stationed in the dark entranceway to your building. Oh, and when you left the building... It was my double crane saw, not me. I stopped just an instant there in the dark hallway and whispered instructions to him. Oh, I see. My double got in the car and drove off. I went back in, traced the phone call, learned where the hideout was, and with the help of a fast car... The I... shadow reached there long before anyone expected him. Exactly. There's no time to make any elaborate plans beyond phoning Weston to raid the place. But luckily, Fenton was so keyed up that... When he fired at the shadow, his aim with that machine gun was pretty bad. And then he lost his head and killed Crane while trying to kill the shadow. That's right. And Crane never got a chance to reveal the shadow's real identity. Luckily for the shadow, no. So it was easy when the police got there for the shadow to slip out unseen and <laughs> for Lamont Cranston to come puffing in a minute later to be twitted by Commissioner Weston. <laughs> oh, poor Commissioner Weston. Lamont, you know what he said when you arrived? No, Margo, what? <laughs> he said, that's just like Lamont. Always late when there's any excitement. <laughs> And now let me introduce Blue Coal's distinguished heating expert, John Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Don't let a few days of mild weather fool you. You'll need a fire for a while, six to eight weeks more, most likely. So, folks, in order to continue efficient firing right down to the last, give your furnace a cleaning now. And here's what I mean. Get the fly ash off the heating surfaces where it's been accumulating all season. That's the main thing. You know, fly ash gradually coats the heating surfaces and hampers them in carrying heat upstairs because it insulates them. Yes, even better than asbestos would. So get rid of all fly ash. It's the simplest thing in the world to do. Don't disturb the fire. Just open the clean-out door. Then with a wire brush or scraper, give the heating surfaces a light going over. Make sure you brush or scrape off all the fly ash or soot that's accumulated, and that's all you have to do. Cleaning your furnace is a small job. But it pays off big, because with a clean furnace, you'll get more heat from less coal for the rest of the season. I thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, The Shadow will demonstrate that... Weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This story produced by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of Blue Coal. This is Mutual.